Okay, so starting at the front of the goose sack on this TK110 HDG, you've got our hydraulic pressure gauge. This is to let you know how much pressure you're getting out of your PTO when you're lifting a load. It should be between 2,700 and 3,000 PSI, capable of lifting a full load right behind the goose neck. If you have any issues when you are lifting a load off the ground, make sure to check this to see what kind of pressure you're getting out of your truck pump. It should be between 2,700 and 3,000 PSI. All of your controls for your lift cylinders and your gooseneck support are here. All the instructions on how to disconnect properly and reconnect the trailer are shown on this decal, as well as all of your grease points on the gooseneck. These pivot bearings here don't get a lot, or pivot bushings don't get a lot of rotation, so it's important to make sure you grease the inner and the outer points, as well as on top where the cylinder pivot slot is here. That way you to make sure everything stays nice and lubricated, it doesn't start to bind up. A couple key point or key tips that I like to tell people when they're detaching the gooseneck. When you go to lower it off the ground and you lower your load pins here, or your stirrups off the load pins, only bring it down about a half an inch. That way this riser box stays in line with the trailer as much as possible. When you drop the air in your truck and you lower it off about a half an inch and pull off, and you come back and lower the air in your truck to reconnect, the box will be at the same plane and hook back into place every time. If you lower it too much, it's at an angle and the lock pin doesn't want to go in right away. One of the other things to remember to do is when you go to bat, lock, hook back up, just like it says on the directions, lock your gooseneck lock pin before backing up. It's spring loaded, it'll help act as a guide as you get back into the trailer. And when it gets to the hole, it'll drop right into place. Make sure you lock the pin before you go to reconnect. One safety feature built into this trailer is that these load, uh, these transport doors with your ride position heights will not go forward unless this lock pin is fully engaged into the trailer. That just prevents you from mistakenly disconnecting going down the road because you forgot to lock the pin. So if you can't get these doors forward, it's because this lock pin isn't fully engaged. One other recommendation I have on the lock pin, and Luke, you wanna zoom in on that. These come with grease out of the factory. When in the winter time, if you do a lot of gravel roads, things get cold, that grease can bind a little bit, make it slow moving. I would clean all the grease off, use dry graphite spray for lubrication instead of the grease. Especially in the colder climate or colder part of the season, it's going to make it easier to free flow up and down. These little white blocks here are just tension blocks to keep the doors from flopping around when you're moving them. Um, if they're a little tight, you can loosen them, but they're, they're, that's all their purpose is. Just keep the door, transport doors from flopping when you're, when you're trying to pick positions. Here. Your multiple ride height doors, this is your main transport door here. You're going to pick one of your five settings. Each setting is about three quarter inch difference from raising and lowering the bed. When you're empty, if you have your lift axle up, you can use one of these lower two settings to drop the front of the trailer down, which will raise the back up higher and give you more ground clearance off your lift axle. That'll help prevent any scrubbing on the lift. As you can see right now, trailer block similar to what the ride height would be and you've got about three and a half or four inches of ground clearance as it's sitting. When you raise that up put the transport door in this first position you'll lose about an inch of that or you can go down lower to regain that clearance. Uh, the front pull out outrigger we do these as a double wide as standard because it takes all the stress of the, the equipment you know on when you first come on all that weights on this first outrigger. It's just a pull out it has a stop in there so it doesn't drop all the way out lock your pin in and set it in place when you're not using it slide it back in lock it in place um, as we go back to the rear of the trailer is that going to be too big of a pile no back to the back of the trailer we have our six foot knuckle trough our boom plates which are removable as well if you need to get the top side of the axles the air chambers as far as maintenance goes just like any wheeled piece of machinery uh, truck, vehicle, whatever. You want to check your lug nut torque after 500 miles or sooner. Check your oil. Is that oil's been lubricating all the new components and whatnot? You want to make sure your fluid levels are good. You can pull these Stemco caps off. You don't have to use the fill bolt. You can pull those caps off to check the oil level and dump the oil in. The ride height controls at the rear. Pretty straightforward. All of the instructions are here. You've got a liquid gauge that tells you what your load on the trailer is. So for example, if you're at 60 PSI with all three axles down, if you check your chart here, 
kind of get close to 60 PSI. That's 19,000 pounds per axle on the trailer grouping. So you use that gauge, translate it with this chart. When you're going down the road in transport, you need to have your suspension control pushed in in the auto configuration. If you get to a railroad track or a crossing where you're afraid you're going to belly out and you need to raise the trailer, you can raise it off the transport locks on the gooseneck to raise the front up for slow maneuvering only. You can also pull this out to manual and then you have a manual ride height control here where you can raise, lower, or hold the center position. As soon as you get over your obstacle, let's in this example the railroad track, you're already raised up, you'll get over your obstacle, get out, lower your gooseneck back down to transport position and push that into auto. When you're going down the highway, this always has to be an auto for your bags to equalize. Your lift axle is a simple uh, push-pull button here. Push this down, it's going to lower that axle. This trailer is set up with dual ride height valves. You have a primary on the driver's side second axle. When you're in transport with the lift axle down, that's going to set your ride height uh, per the manufacturer's setting. When you raise this, it's going to switch to your passenger side ride height valve and that's going to raise the airbags just slightly. So Luke, if you back up, you can see we have quite a bit of clearance right now between the tires and the fenders. This is sitting about an inch and a half higher than normal conditions. One, because it's not loaded, but two, because your lift axle's up and it's going off your secondary ride height valve to give you this ground clearance under the tire. If we go back, your air booster here, all of your connections are on the inside box. There's also a remote tank drain, so if you know the trailer is going to sit for quite a while, you can crack that uh, uh, tank drain valve to make sure the air tanks that are covered up drain so you don't get condensation and rust in the steel tanks. The connection point here is your shimmable uh, air booster. This works two ways. You'll get your trailer in the, in the transport position, lift axle down, load on it. You're going to put in, this right now has the thin gauge shim in here. When you're empty, typically you'll have no shims at all. When you're loaded, to get the most weight back here, most often you'll have just the one thick shim. The one thick shim will keep these beams parallel with the, the booster beam. Once you do that, you'll use your air regulator. And again, the instructions are right here by the, by the regulator valve. You'll regulate how much down pressure you're putting on these airbags, which in conjunction with that shim, will lift weight off the trailer and put uh, weight onto the booster axle. So if you want to get 20,000 pounds here, 60,000 pounds there, you'll use your large shim, regulate this up till it reads on the gauge here, 20,000 pounds, and you know you're equalized. When you unload your equipment, it's crucial that you take air out of this. A lot of guys will run around 10 PSI still just to keep some down pressure on the, on the rear axle for uh, not skipping tires when you, lock, when you hit the brakes so they don't lock up a flat spot. But you also want to take the shim out of the booster extension. That way it doesn't run the, the chance of carrying the trailer around a corner. These brackets here are only going to be used if you pin the, the rear flip axle directly behind the trailer. These large shims that you see here, you can leave in place all the time between the booster extension and the flip axle. That keeps things parallel and, and in line with each other. There's no reason to take those out um, unless you're pinning this directly behind the trailer to run as a four axle configuration. In the event of pinning this to, uh, directly behind the trailer in a four axle configuration, there won't be any regulator valve. It'll just be an inline plug-in for your, your airbags uh, and the four axles will equalize with each other. One maintenance point other than the S cams on the brake system on the flip axle, it's going to be these two pivot points. This is a spherical bearing inside a metal bushing with a race. It's very crucial that you hit the grease points on the top and the bottom per the, what the manual shows um, as often as possible. If you're greasing the brakes, grease this, grease this pivot uh, bearing here. In the event that you want to back the trailer up maneuver, you can use the, air, the switch on the side here, right here, to pneumatically lock the pivot and then you can disconnect the line to dump all the air in the booster. So that'll make it so you can push the trailer backward without having to try to steer the trailer around. Dump the air and go ahead and lock that pivot and that'll, that'll make it easier to maneuver in reverse. The flip axle is also equipped with chain ups in the event that you load the booster onto the trailer at some point. You can use these chain ups here, dump the bags like you see, 
go ahead and pull this chain up so that'll keep the suspension from dropping out as you maneuver it. When not in use, just go to the lowest or the longest chain setting, and that'll, that'll keep the chains out of the way, and then also not pull on your airbags. At the back of the trailer and the flip axle, you've got a four pull auxiliary circuit. This is tied to your clearance lights. That comes off the center pin of your truck, as does your strobe. You need power to the center pin of your, of your uh, seven way plug on your truck to power your four inch amber strobes. You also have a remote flasher option on here, which even if the gooseneck is disconnected for loading equipment, all of your lights are gonna flash on the back, signaling that you have a low, you know, you're in the process of working. Again, you gotta have power to the center pin of your truck on the seven-way circuit to power the lights. All of the air lines on the trailer are color-coded, so if you look in your manual, your service manual, each line is coded for a specific thing. The yellow is for your lift axle bags, green for pressure protection, blue service, red emergency, etc. If you have any type of a leak or anything to troubleshoot, those lines in your manual help signal where you need to look. Overall, that should be it.